I recently got an email asking if it was typical to undo and redo the same things over and over as a beginner. And I'd say yes, as a beginner, that was my experience because I was still learning and trying to figure things out. So I thought today I'd do something a little bit different and take you back through my very early sewing projects when I was learning to sew and tell you about what went right, what went wrong, and most importantly, what I learned from each of these garments. So keep watching. Hi, I'm Tony, and this is So So Lounge. Now, I have mentioned in the past that my very, very first sewn garments, I threw them away. Um, I had a shirt and a skirt from Sewing 1, and I had a suit with a jacket and pants from Sewing 2. We'll just put those in antiquity where they belong and move forward to the very first thing I ever designed and made the pattern for and sewed all by myself. And it is this black dress that is overly complicated, <laughs> but I didn't really know what I was doing. But let this be a lesson to you and enthusiasm. I was very enthusiastic. This was the first project for my draping class in college. And I just was inspired by a painting and thought like, I'm gonna make this gorgeous dress. It's gonna be perfect for a night at the opera. Not that I really went to the opera back then, but that was my idea. And I chose this black um, damask fabric, which if you can't see, has a black print on it which was not the best choice for the simple reason that I ripped out this dress quite a lot. And ripping out damask fabric with that extra, you know, design in it was really hard. So let's talk about this one first. So originally this dress was supposed to have this gauzy uh, layer over the entire thing, but that quickly got scrapped because I couldn't figure out how to connect it. And there's still some remnant of threads here and there. So this was draped. That means that I cut muslin, put it on my dress form, and made all these pattern pieces out of muslin first and then turned them into paper. And I was very obsessed with the time with making these very stylized bust lines in lieu of sewing darts. I wasn't averse to darts. I just, I don't know, I thought this looked cool. The problem, of course, is how to connect all this together. And I remember my professor saying, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see this. Um, why did you put the top together this way? Because this is top stitched on. So <laughs> I connected it with top stitching and she was not happy about that. But meanwhile, nobody told me what to do. So this was a total experiment in me figuring things out. And actually, when I said that I sewed this all by myself, that is not quite true because I called grandma crying the night before it was due and asked her to drive from Houston to Austin to help me out. So when grandma arrived, there was no lining and I didn't know how to finish the edges because I didn't know about facings. I hadn't made any facings for this dress. So I'm sure grandma realized that quickly and instead of adding to my misery, she said, well, let's just make a lining out of the pattern pieces you have and we'll just sew it all and then flip it to the inside. So that's what we did. I remade the whole dress with all these tiny pieces and then we flipped it to the inside. And that's why the finishes look weird because they were all stitched and then flipped and then put together. So this dress, it got finished, it got turned in. I don't remember my specific grade. I'm guessing it was like in the B range. Um, there was not one, but two hooks and eyes. I don't know why there are two. I, probably because I put the zipper in too low. So this is my dress on my current dress form, which is a little bit bigger than the one I used in college. Our college dress forms were all a standard size 12. And you can see that this is not like, it, the fit's not great, but you know, the design was there. I was inspired. I was thinking draping was awesome. And you know, you can see that there's kind of some interesting details that I added into this otherwise basic dress. The armholes, gape a little bit um, more towards the front than the back i'm not sure why but you know that was something i did and the back looks okay i seem to recall that these were like way out on the shoulders but it's then it makes the gaping worse so i don't know what happened with this dress i learned the importance of facings so that my future project all have facings used more or less correctly, but we'll get to that in a minute. 
The other thing I learned was the importance of the center back slit because I pegged the bottom of this skirt. You couldn't walk in it, so I had to go put that in. That salvaged it. But then we still have another whole problem of the lining not being connected to the center back slit. So it's kind of just hanging out freely. My next project was this chinoiserie inspired um, kimono type jacket with an asymmetric slit. And the original version had a mandarin collar. This is the second version of this because. At about 2.30 in the morning, when I was trying to connect the collar to the neckline, it wouldn't work. I can't remember if I wasn't thinking about seam allowances or I had them in. I don't remember exactly what happened, but I remember thinking it was going to be a good idea to start cutting the neckline to make it big enough so that my collar would fit, which I think we all know was not the right decision. And you're not supposed to sew when you're tired, but I had a deadline. My project was due the next morning. So I took it to class and my professor fussed at me again for not, for cutting up my project. And this was my don't fail me, I will redo it project. So I omitted the Mandarin collar because I still couldn't figure that out. But it's not horrible. I mean, it's got kimono sleeves because I did not know how to make a pattern for a set-in sleeve. And... The inside is not horrible either. There's some facings, so yay for facings. Um, there was like one here at the neckline, and then there's this really giant all-in-one piece for the rest of it. So not sure what I was thinking there. And then I have a giant hem on this jacket, like it's enormous, that is then folded up to finished. And I didn't know how to finish seams. So after learning about the lining system with grandma, I just lined everything, which meant I made the exact same pattern in lining material and then connected it and then flipped it. So I didn't quite successfully do that here at this neckline for the flipping part. And then what I did at the bottom was I zigzag stitched it to the full length and then just folded it up to make the hem. So this is kind of bulky down here because um, there's still lining in it. So that's number two. What did I learn from this? Um, don't sew when you're tired. Don't start cutting into your project when you're exhausted, thinking that something's gonna be a good idea when it's not. And this jacket has a sister skirt where I learned, I would say I learned this, but I didn't because I kept doing this. I kept having the same problem. So this is the skirt, which is actually pretty nice. It's kind of getting kind of yellowy um, with age. It has insanely long darts. I don't know why. Um, it also has a facing and a lining. And the funny thing about this is I connected the lining to the skirt and then I added the facing. So it's really, kind of funny looking because in theory you would attach the lining to the facing and not have this free form facing just hanging out on top of the lining. Um, I did finish the edge of the facing with the serger because I figured out how to make a rolled hem and so that's what I pretty much finished everything with. It's not actually like the proper four, four overlock thread. It was a three uh, rolled hem variety and that's what it looks like. So let's see how, I think I just, yeah, I just folded the lining in and then surged at the finish and then just pressed over. Cause there's no seam there. No, we're just pressed over the back to make that slit. The thing I learned from this was that you have to put a seam allowance on that center back seam or it doesn't fit. So it's really tight across the back and that means it doesn't fit me, but that's okay. So after my draping class, I took a flat pattern class, which I should have taken before draping, but that's a different story. And I made some projects for that, which I have no idea what happened to. They were not great. I did not like them, so I did not keep them apparently. But moving on to the portfolio class, which was the last kind of design class that was the culmination of draping and flat pattern and all of your skills, um, I designed a mini collection 
based on an exhibit or inspired by an exhibit I saw in London, and it was called Colors of the Indus, and it was textiles from um, the Indus region of Pakistan. And I thought, oh, hey, that would be really cool to use some saris that I had. So I went to India when I was in high school. We lived overseas, so it wasn't like that far. And I bought this sari just because I liked it. I thought it was pretty. And then my mom bought this sari for me when she was in London, just because she thought it was pretty and she thought I'd like it. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna use saris as the fabric for my collection. And that's what I ended up doing. Now, this top was from fabric I bought at a store. It is a very, very sheer cotton. I don't remember exactly, because I bought it ages ago. And it's very sheer, so I had to line it. And once again, I employed the method of grandma doing linings and flipping and then figuring out how to attach the facings later. So this again has these funky seam finishes um, where I cut off one side and then did a rolled hem on the other side. And you can see how I connected the this top piece to the lining and then clipped it and then searched it because that was a good solution. And then this is the back, um, which pretty much looks the same. And so some seams are finished, some are not. Um, the zipper seam is not finished. And then I did the whole um, flip up the hem, which is also not finished, and do a blind hem stitch to finish that. So from the outside, it doesn't look bad. But from the inside, it doesn't look good. And I never really thought very much about seam finishes because I did this lining method of not having to worry about them for the most part, which is why other parts of the garment are not finished. And then the pants are kind of the same sort of thing. They're, they're lined um, with an orange leg and a purple leg because the sheer part of the fabric was on this orange side. So that's why the top looks kind of different. It's the same thing of the lining attached to the pant and then this facing added on to finish this top edge. So it's, it's kind of funny. And then there's no, the lining isn't attached to the zipper. So I can show you guys that and just show you things that I made back in the day. Um, you can see that it's not attached. My facings aren't attached to the zipper. There's no real finishing of this. Oh, I did, I did stitch it down on the sides, I think because it kept rolling up. So that was my solution. And it's still not, I could have connected it in the center front along this seam, but I didn't. So it's, it's moving along. So the pants are pretty. Um, I think I put a, a seam allowance on the center back because I attached a zipper, but they're pretty. None of this fits, by the way. So grandma, thank you, grandma, for ironing all of these after they've been in my costume trunk for many years. And grandma was saying how some parts were good and some parts were bad. And that if I had just had a little bit more instruction in class, instead of trying to figure things out on my own or with what she could help me with, I probably would have done a lot better. So the other tunic in the collection is really not finished well at all. It is kind of a disaster. This is a silk sari. And I guess because it was silk, I decided I wasn't gonna finish it because it was such nice fabric and it would feel nice wearing it. But I mean, I really did like a really poor job. Well, I did attach the facings to the zipper on this, but the edge is not finished. The, I don't know why the interfacing isn't trimmed. I don't know what happened there. Um, this edge isn't finished. And what else is happening? Yeah, none of this is finished. It's just kind of there. The interfacing is sticking out. I did attach it to the zipper though, but not at the armhole seam. So that's all moving. There is no understitching on any of these facings. Of course, everything's going to flip out and move around a lot. I did not know about understitching. Kind of got the concept of facings, but nothing else. <laughs> and as a result, this is how things look. I don't know what I did here. I, I think I just attached the facing to the back facing. I just stitched it together um, instead of connecting it and then connecting the facing. I didn't know how to do that. And then let's look at the bottom. This is also not finished at all around the bottom and it's just folded over and stitched. I don't know why I rushed this and didn't spend enough time doing it. 
I think I put things off and did them at the last minute and didn't take my time to sew. Like maybe I should have, but I had other courses and other stuff that, you know, had more immediate grades. So these are silk pants. Um, I know I bought this fabric at a high fashion in Houston. Once again, really long darts for some strange reason. I don't know why. These are really pretty, but these are really poorly made. There's no interfacing at all in these. Um, I don't know what I was thinking. Complete free for all. It's not even tacked to the zipper. Um, none of these seams are finished. And yeah, it's just generally a mess. So not, um, not the best project. I made passing grades. I think I've mostly made Bs is what I told grandma when she was asking me. I don't specifically remember, but I know I didn't make Cs. So um, those are the pants that go with that. Now moving on to the next project, which I only have one piece of. This was another collection. It was inspired by Crete and it was supposed to have gold corsets. I don't know why I thought that was a good idea. Um, they did not really work because I didn't know how to put in boning. So this was the top and these are the pants that go with it. Let's see how these look. Um, there's interfacing, there's no finishing. So all the insides of the pants are just the seams are, you know, they're pressed open. So I think I was taking private sewing lessons by this point and I learned about pressing open seams because these pants have seams that are pressed open, but not finished. <laughs> and then this top, I remember this top. I gave up spring break and went to the sewing lab every day for a week to finish this project, which also had another top, which was like a cowl neck, sleeveless, of course, and um, a skirt. And I don't know where those pieces went because I thought I had them. But anyway, it was all green, green and gold. And then I remember that I had a really nice hem on this and the two pieces were connected. And I got up to the top. And I was like, oh, I don't know how to finish that neckline. Like I wasn't really clear on what to do. And my professor actually came in like a couple of days and looked at it and goes, yeah, you did that wrong. You shouldn't have done it that way. You should have started at the neckline, then put in the casing and then finish the rest of the top. So imagine how upset I was. I like just started crying. I cried a lot back then when it came to sewing and I was just like so exhausted and so tired because I've been working so hard on this. And my classmate was like, I'll rip it out, go to lunch, go eat something, come back, it'll be ready. Because she was a much better sewer than I was and she was just doing some fine hand finishing and minor things like that on her projects. So she saved me. And she ripped really, really fast because in about the 30 minutes that I went to go get lunch and eat it and come back, it was all ripped out. It was all pinned the way I needed to sew it. And then I put it together and this is it. And it is a raglan sleeve because once again, not sewing a sudden sleeve, don't know how to do that. And I'm not sure what happened with the casing because there's parts over the seam where it's flat so I don't know what happened there. I don't know what I was doing, but it's okay. No, not, not horrible. So that is the beginning, beginning of my sewing experience. And I have to say that looking back on all this, I'm, I'm a little bit horrified at how bad it was, but I'm also kind of proud of myself because I did not have a lot of sewing teaching in that I found a way to make things work, even though it wasn't the right way to make things work. And I know that people will tell you that sewing, there's different ways you can put things together and it's still correct. This is not it, and <laughs> I know that. But I was enthusiastic and I loved it and I love the design aspect of it. And this is, this is the end result. So I'm glad to be able to share that with you guys today. My point with all of this walk down memory lane and the show and tell of past projects is that when you're first starting to sew, you are going to make mistakes. You are going to have to rip things out and you might cry about that. And that's okay because the number of tears shed over this top, probably fill a bucket and it's just the learning process. So don't feel bad if you have to rip out and redo and 
re-sew and then maybe rip it out again because you're learning how to do things the first time and that's okay. And I can honestly say with all of my early projects, that was the best I could do at the time. And I worked really hard and they look pretty good. Now, you know, I could have had some better finishing and things like that, but considering I made the patterns and I did all the sewing and I didn't have any instructions and I didn't really know what I was doing, I think they look pretty good. Um, and maybe you're working on something right now and you're like, I just ripped that out for the third time. You know, is there something wrong with me? There's nothing wrong with you. You're just learning. And like learning anything, it just takes time. And with sewing, that does mean you're probably going to rip things out and have to re-sew them a few times before you get the hang of it. But here's the good news. Once you get the hang of it, it's going to be awesome. So I'd like to know what you're working on now and what struggle you overcame despite having to rip and re-sew multiple times. So leave a comment below and let me know. I can't wait to hear from you.